Welcome, everyone, another edition of Let's Hit the Ring, Jack. That's right, it's Let's Hit the Ring uh, this week because we're talking about wrestling. Uh, a few wrestling videos up this week, uh, all surrounding the big show, the WWE Royal Rumble, my second favorite pay-per-view of the year, of course, right behind WrestleMania, which is coming up in April. But uh, talking all about wrestling, uh, if you enjoy the content, please make sure you go up above, hit subscribe. If you don't have a Google account, Please just take a moment to create one. It's free, costs you nothing, and then you can hit subscribe. And that is the best way to support me and my content. It costs you nothing. Just need some subscriptions, all right? And uh, that's pretty awesome. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, even if you're not subscribed, thank you for watching my video. It all helps. And uh, But uh, getting into NXT TakeOver Phoenix, we're going to review that in just a moment. But a few programming notes. If you're here looking for uh, some of my regular content, like my theme park content, don't go anywhere. As a matter of fact, I got my work scheduled for next week, and it looks like there's a pretty good chance I'm going to be able to have a day to get down to Disneyland. I haven't been there for a few months now, and uh, get down there. There's new stuff to see. Of course, Star Wars Land coming up this year in June, and uh, we're all very excited about that. But lots of theme park content coming your way on my channel right here. Uh, if you don't want to miss any of that, all you have to do, make sure you're subscribed up above and uh, you're all set to go. But um, another programming note, uh, as I record this, it's very early in the morning on Sunday, January 27th, of course. It's Royal Rumble Sunday. Uh, if you want to watch the Royal Rumble, you can with me. Come on out. You can watch it with me. I will be at Dave & Buster's in Los Angeles on Hollywood Boulevard. That's right next to the Chinese Theater, that whole uh, touristy area there. Uh, they've got the Chinese Theater and the Hollywood Wax Museum. And Anyway, Dave & Buster's is located in the Hollywood and Highland Mall. It's a very famous mall uh, right there. You can see the Hollywood sign from there. And um, right next to the uh, Chinese Theater and all that whole area right there on Hollywood Boulevard. So come on out. You can check out... Uh, the Royal Rumble there. A lot of wrestling fans are expected to be there. I'll be there doing a video, uh, getting some shots, uh, which will be included in my Royal Rumble review video. And um, having a good time. We're going to have some beers, some food, watch some wrestling. Uh, a lot of wrestling fans are going to be there. It's going to be fun. So come on out and join me if you want to. You can be on my video. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. And uh, that is later today as I record this. Sunday, January 27th, Royal Rumble Sunday at Dave & Buster's in Los Angeles. So that's going to be a good time. Uh, okay, I think that's all of the uh, programming notes for now. Uh, hopefully we're going to get down to Disneyland later this week. But uh, speaking of subscriptions, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, I love all the people that watch my channel, watch my videos. It's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, if you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. I'm telling you, there's so much great content on my channel. Everything from live music, concerts, uh, video game press conferences from E3, um, theme parks, uh, asking, Be I was at Universal Studios, I asked Beetlejuice for dating advice. You don't want to miss that video. One of my uh, most viewed videos. It's a really good video there. And lots, lots, lots more. If you like bagpipes, that's on there. Uh, Celtic music, Celtic festivals. Uh, and so much more. There's just tons of stuff to see on my channel. So make sure you're subscribed. Scroll through. I think this is video number 107. So just tons of stuff to see. Lots more to come. And you don't want to miss out on anything. So just hit subscribe. Uh, if you want to donate financially, I don't even ask that you do that. But if you uh, want to help keep the train rolling, uh, put gas in my tank, keep hitting that road. Uh, you can do so. Uh, I have that set up for you. It's called Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash let's hit the road jack and you can donate as little or as much as you like. And uh, But number one thing I ask you to do is hit subscribe right here on YouTube. All right, let's get into the show. Lots of interesting things going on uh, in NXT and uh, of course NXT TakeOver. Always such a great show. Uh, and I'll give you my overall thoughts of the show at the end. But uh, let's just jump right in and see what happened here at NXT TakeOver. Such an exciting show. What a great show. Um, um, here's Now, I'm re I read the results right off of WWE.com. 
and the writing is atrocious, with filled with puns and nicknames, and it's terrible. So just bear with me on that. And uh, lots of eye rolls, and oh my goodness, it's terrible. But anyway, uh, they do uh, show kind of an overview recap, and it's a big spoiler. So I'm not going to read that right up front. We're just going to get into the first match and go through the show as it happened. So the show opens up with the uh, the War Raiders versus the Undisputed Era for the NXT Tag Team Championship. Now, uh, my prediction here, I didn't actually get into my prediction videos because I just didn't have time. These videos are taking way, way, way longer than I thought they would. Um, I think by adding all of these graphics and stuff here, it, it takes... It takes way longer to uh, process the video and upload it than normal. Um, but that's okay. But it's just uh, that's the way it works. So as a result, I didn't have enough time to do all the videos I wanted to this week. But there are still several videos on my channel. You can see my Monday Night Raw review, my SmackDown review, and my NXT review all up on my channel right now. And you can uh, check those out uh, if you like. Already got quite a few views on those. So if you're checking out those videos, thank you. Thank you very much. It's awesome. But anyway, let's get into this match. The War Raiders versus the Undisputed Era. Uh, man, what a great match this was. This was just phenomenal. What a great way to open the show. Let's read what it says. When there's war, there's an undisputed claim waiting to happen. Undisputed, get it? Despite having never actually conquered the War Raiders, a chair-wielding Bobby Fish on the October 17th of edition of NXT, well, it's going back all the way to October, of NXT allowed them to skate away. The Undisputed Era spent the last few months walking and talking like they had, uh, but it was put up or shut up in the Valley of the Sun, and Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly met a reality they didn't anticipate. Uh, let me go let me see if it goes into, uh, yeah, it did, doesn't go into it, uh, but the War Raiders, their entrance was incredible. Uh, it was like a Viking, I think they call them the modern day Vikings, but they, a bunch of guys come out dressed up with the shields and the spears and uh, armor, and they look like, uh, like Viking warriors, and they come out there uh, for the entrance and smoke kind of comes up, and then the War Raiders kind of climb up from underneath the stage and uh, they're also dressed up like Vikings and it was awesome. It really reminded me of WrestleMania 22 of Triple H's entrance when he came up as the King of Kings and he's sitting on this big throne that came up from under the stage and he's got his crown on and it was awesome. WrestleMania 22. If you've never seen that uh, entrance with, and he was um, going against John Cena and I do believe that was in Chicago. And uh, John Cena came out as like a like a mobster entrance, uh, complete with firing a, she a machine gun. That was uh, like a Tommy gun. That was really cool. Uh, WrestleMania 22. If you've never seen that match, go on WWE Network and check it out. Uh, Triple H versus John Cena. But uh, the War Raiders entrance really, really reminded me of uh, Triple H's entrance back at WrestleMania 22. I think Triple H probably had his hand in that. Um, you could just smell Triple H's influence all over that entrance. Uh, it was amazing. Fantastic entrance. I loved it. Really good. I'm surprised Undisputed Era didn't have their own. They just came out with their normal entrance. Uh, but they should have done something special as well, uh, in my opinion. But uh, really great entrance by the War Raiders. I really enjoyed it. Uh, using the fiery real estate of Phoenix's Talking Stick Resort Arena. That's a strange name, I think. But to their advantage... Hanson and Rowe unleashed their scalding disdain for Strong and O'Reilly by using their incredible power to fling the title holders all around the canvas. By the way, these guys move like cruiserweights. They're big guys. I mean, for me, Hanson stole the show. Uh, he's, what, 350 to 400 pounds, something like that. And he's doing, uh, you know, springboard... Uh, back elbows off the rope and uh, oh, my, oh my gosh he's flying over the top rope like he's a cruiserweight and it's just and, oh my god he's, he's never seen a big man he's doing cartwheels to avoid moves 
And that kind of reminded me of back in the day, Bam Bam Bigelow. He was a 350 pound big guy and he would do a cartwheel on his ring entrance. And uh, you just, wow. <laughs> but uh, these guys, Hanson in particular, uh, just stole the show. Uh, amazing. After a vicious start from the Undisputed Era duo, Rowe and Hanson fired back with their double team prowess. Uh, Rowe sc scooped up Hanson. By the way, that's <laughs> Hanson. I don't know what he weighs exactly, but he's a big guy. And for anybody to scoop him up, man, that's some serious strength right there. Uh, Rowe scooped up Hanson while positioned on the ring apron and slammed him onto their opponents, flattening them both on the outside. The battle-hardened modern-day Vikings were more than ready for the champion's trickery, but the irreverent champions used their tenacity to prolong the action. Strong lived up to his Messiah of the Backbreaker moniker. By the way, yeah, Roderick Strong, man, talk about some strength. He did a couple of a couple of backbreaker, uh, tilt the world backbreakers, if I'm not mistaken, uh, moves on the uh, the War Raiders at a couple of different points in the match. And man, very impressive strength from Roderick Strong. Really enjoy his ring work. So he cracked Rowe with a, a few spine-tingling backbreakers to shift the momentum. And O'Reilly followed up with his own catch of painful submission holds. By the way, the, uh, the teamwork between, between O'Reilly and, uh, and uh, the uh, Undisputed Era, the other guys I just talked about, Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. The teamwork between those two are amazing. They make such a fantastic tag team and uh, really great stuff. There was a great spot where the referee was distracted and uh, Roderick Strong came into the ring while, while Rowe was trying to come into the ring to save Hanson. And so his, the referee's back was turned and Roderick, it's classic heel tactic, but uh, they, they pulled it off just brilliantly. Uh, really great spot in that match. But the Undisputed Era's finely tuned tandem offense forced the juggernauts on defense, but Hanson and Rowe refused to allow their raid to be snuffed out this night. Strong superplexed Hanson from the top turnbuckle. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my god, that was such a great spot. Uh, superplex, of th I don't, again, it doesn't say here, I don't know what, I could look it up, I, I, exactly what Hanson weighs. He's got to be at least 350, maybe 400 pounds, and there's Roderick Strong, up on the top rope, superplexing Hanson. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Man, fantastic. Superplex Hanson for the top turnbuckle. For O'Reilly to follow up with a diving knee. But it wasn't enough for the one, two, three. The nefarious duo then delivered their devastating high low, which is like a leg sweep clothesline combo. A move that has seen Undisputed Era defeat just about everyone in their path. But the War Raiders refused to go down, uh, and I think the commentary team said, has anyone ever kicked out of the high-low since, since they uh, have been tag team champions? Uh, so that's like their finishing move. One thing about finishing moves, uh, especially on these pay-per-view situations, is they're not really finishing moves anymore. <laughs> you know, back in the 80s, like Hulk Hogan, let's say, for example, his finishing move was the leg drop. Nobody ever kicked out of the leg drop except two occasions in his entire career that I can think of off the top of my head, and that was The Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania VI, and The Rock at WrestleMania, was it WrestleMania 19? Uh, both took place in Canada, and uh, that's only two times I can think of that anyone's ever kicked out of Hulk Hogan's leg drop that I know of. There, there, there might be times that I don't can't think of right now, but it was. the point is it was extremely rare for anyone to kick out of anyone's finishing move. And now, today, it's all the rage. Oh, he got his finishing move three times, but the, the, the opponent kicks out, and then they put each other in, each, in the opponent's finishing moves. And it's, it's great, but they sh it's overkill when they do it too much. It should be saved for very special occasions. But anyway, uh, Hanson and Rowe recouped soon after to raid the NXT Tag Team titles, snagging O'Reilly for the fallout to rain, pillage, and spoil 
Strong and O'Reilly's undisputed 2019 plan. So we got brand new NXT Tag Team Champions. Well deserved. What an what an outing and what a performance from the War Raiders. Made me an instant fan. I wasn't super familiar with this tag team. I know they uh, not uh, not too far long ago they came into uh, NXT, and uh, I wasn't familiar with who they were. But oh my gosh, big men moving around like. Uh, Cruiser weights doing superplexes and handspring uh, springboard back elbows and flying over the top rope and uh, just incredible stuff. Just incredible. So congratulations to the War Raiders and uh, cheers to you. What a match. Now, uh, what's going to happen with Undisputed Era? Uh, they proclaim before the pay-per-view that they're going to be getting all the gold. In NXT, well, the first thing they did was lose gold in 2019. So uh, we'll see. There's a lot. What's the future's uncertain for uh, Undisputed Era? Are they going to stay in NXT and reclaim more gold? Are they going to start showing cracks in their teamwork? Or maybe they're going to get called up to the main roster. Uh, you know, um, Adam Cole it reminds me a whole lot of, uh, of a Shawn Michaels in his prime uh, when he was on top of his game back in the 90s. And uh, we'll see. Uh, Really great, talented group of guys. All right, moving on. The next uh, next match. Uh, immediately, I'll get into this. So we got Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ono. Right off the bat, I am not a Matt Riddle fan, and it's mostly because of me. I mean, he's talented. He connects with the crowd. Uh, people like him. He's like got this server, kind of a surfer, laid back, uh, West Coast kind of personality, bro. You know, but I don't like him mostly because I have a thing about feet. <laughs> Dude, put some shoes on, put some wrestling boots on. I don't want to see your feet. Uh, one of the reasons I don't watch UFC is because when you know. Somebody puts on an ankle lock and they grab the guy's bare foot with their hand and twist it and the guy's bare foot is right in your face. Oh, ugh. I just can only imagine the smell. <laughs> and uh, I just have a thing about feet. I don't want to see feet, uh, bare feet in a wrestling ring. And uh, not to mention it's not very safe for ankle support and, and things like what happened in this match happened. And so I'm already just kind of checked out of this match. I don't even want to see this match because I don't want to look at Matt Riddle's bare feet. I'm not excited. I just want to get past this match right away. Uh, not taking anything away from Matt Riddle and his in-ring skills, his talent, his ability, and his, uh, his charisma, and the whole thing. He's got the whole package. I just wish he'd put some boots on. <laughs> so that being said, let's get into the match. And things happened in this match that just completely were repulsive to me. And I, I just didn't want to see it. Uh, despite deeming the word bro canceled a few weeks back, Cassius Ono may have to deal with getting called Cassius Brono. Cassius Brono. I told you, I warned you, these articles... I don't know who writes this garbage. He was dealt the L in his high-impact brawl against Matt Riddle. In the threequel to their heated rivalry, which started with a six-second KO of Ono at TakeOver War Games 2, which I was at that show, and then a bro mission finale in fight number two of the January 2nd edition of NXT. I don't think I saw that one, but uh, cool. Both heralded strikers exhausted their pent-up animosity toward one another Excuse me, by exchanging a series of wallops inside and outside the ring. Where Riddle sought retribution, Ono aimed to inflict more treachery on his opponent. The King of Bros exploded out of the starting block, striking Ono with a running knee before deadlifting his opponent for a suplex. By the way, great, great strength <laughs> from uh, Matt Riddle. Uh, that's impressive. And you, Ono's not a small guy either. He's not as big as the War Raiders, but uh, definitely beefy. <laughs> and to deadlift someone like that into a belly-to-back suplex, very impressive. 
But the knockout artist wasn't going down like that. In between back-to-back -back slaps across Riddle's face, Ono also served up deja vu to his recent post-match attack by driving him into the steel steps. The treachery continued. Treachery. With Ono pulling out all the stops against the original bro. Attacking and biting Riddle's bare foot. Oh. Biting, sticking his toe right in his mouth and biting it. That was disgusting and repulsive. I, that's the last thing I wanted to see. For God's sakes, put, put some shoes on. Please, put some shoes on. I know it's me. I haven't, you know, some people out there have a foot fetish, which is completely disgusting to me. I'm the opposite. I say I have a foot anti-fetish. The opposite of a fetish. Cover that thing up. <laughs> I know it's me. Most people love their feet. They do. And I think it's so gross. But anyway, I don't want to see Cassius Ono grabbing Matt Riddle's toes and sticking them in his mouth. Don't want to see it. But it happened. And it was disgusting. Slang, uh, slammed him with a Liger Bomb and delivered a heavy-duty moonsault. But Riddle absorbed the onslaught and returned it with fury. When Ono attempted to extend his arm for a fist bump, Riddle refused the olive branch of, in the middle of the match. Of course he's not going to. Come on. By the way, that I thought that made Ono look weak. Ono has not been impressive in NXT, in my opinion. Uh, Riddle tossed him across the mat with a sleeper suplex before forcing him to tap out to a bro mission. It wasn't really a bro mission. It was just uh, pummeling elbow strikes, they say here. He was just beat the crap out of Ono uh, with elbow after elbow and started just laying into him. And finally, Ono said, that's enough. And he started tapping out. His tap outs uh, initially were on the opposite side of where the referee was. So the referee didn't see it right away. But as soon as he did, he called for the bell, stopped the match. By the way, I wish they, uh, when they do that uh, for submission style kind of thing in the WWE, they should do it more like UFC. Look, if someone's tapping out, you don't turn around and call for the bell. You stop the guy from pummeling. You, you want to protect the, uh, the, the fighters, right, in UFC. You, you pull the guy off first. The first thing you do, oh, okay, that's it. It's done. It's done. You pull him off. Stop it. Stop it. Then you call for the bell. So WWE, come on, let's 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 just uh, you know you turn around and start calling for the bell, and you allow the guy to keep pummeling for a few more seconds. You know, as soon as as soon as the guy taps out, you need to get in there and stop the fight. You need to stop it from continuing. It's just uh, you, you want to make wrestling more uh, legit, kind of. We all know it's a it's a show. We all know that, but uh, you, you want people to take wrestling more seriously. It's just, it's, it's the small things like that. Stop the fight first. Get the opponent off of him. Then call for the bell. Just my opinion. But anyway, uh, Footboy. Footboy won the match. <clears throat> the less I see of Matt Riddle, the better, until he puts boots on. Not saying it was a bad match, but I just personally was not invested in it. I know it's it's me. I have issues with feet. <laughs> it's me. Next match, uh, we go into Johnny Gargano versus Ricochet for the NXT North American Championship. Everyone knew this was going to be an amazing match. And it was. It was mind-blowingly awesome from start to finish, and uh, I was real curious to see what was going to happen between uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Uh, they're going to be reuniting. We'll get to that in a little bit. But start to finish, uh, the match started off with some fantastic chain wrestling. These guys are just some of the best you've ever seen. Uh, no kidding, this, this match... You know, not not even halfway through, and this was the best match. You just knew this was the best match we're going to see tonight, probably uh, of the whole weekend. There's nothing that's even going to touch this match. Uh, it was that awesome, 
It's one of those matches like, wow, match of the year contender. One of the best matches I've ever seen in the history of wrestling. And, oh my God, it was just incredible. Ricochet, dude. <laughs> oh, God. He's like a cat. Like he, You can do anything to him. He'll land on his feet every time. Just amazing. Um, God, what can I say? This is just one of those matches that you're just going, oh my God. Like you just know nothing's going to... Uh, Nothing's even going to come close to touching this match. So, um, let's see what the article says. At one point during an electric NXT North American title matchup, Ricochet looked at his opponent and genuinely asked, this was great by the way, which Johnny Gargano, Gargano am I going to get tonight? By the way, great storytelling going into this. Great storytelling with uh, what's going on with Johnny Gargano. Versus uh, Goody Two Shoes, kind of transitioning over to a darker side, and uh, kind of there's Tomasa Champa in the background, kind of like, come on, you know what I mean? It's fascinating. So here's uh, Ricochet, and he's saying, "All right, are you a good guy? Are you a bad guy? Are you gonna attack me from behind? Or are you gonna step up like a man face to face? Which which Johnny Gargano am I getting tonight? Right? Fantastic." So what he failed to notice was the Johnny Gargano from yesteryear was no more. And 2019 had welcomed Mr. Wins in Championships. What followed was a moment to behold. For more than 20 minutes, the one and only Johnny Wrestling, the one and only, I should say the one and only, which is Ricochet, and Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano. See these nicknames? Just do away with these nicknames, please. Fought tooth and nail over the NXT North American Championship in a mesmerizing bout. But where Ricochet fought to prolong his long-standing championship reign, Gargano had no plans of leaving TakeOver without his first singles title. By the way, isn't that amazing that he has not won a singles title in these years with all this match of the year, year after year after year, with all these wonderful great feuds and matches he does. He hasn't won a title yet, and that's something. In his quest for championship gold, Gargano even reached into his old bag of tricks, striking his signature DIY pose before clobbering the title holder with a brutal super kick that sent Ricochet flying out of the ring. The dynamic superstar showed no mercy as they meticulously tried to one-up each other with just about every move in their arsenal, including one breathtaking instance where Ricochet countered one of Gargano's attacks to perform his own Gargano escape. And that's what I was talking about with these uh, finishing moves. Uh, Gargano couldn't get his finishing move to finish the match, and later on in the match, Ricochet used Gargano's own finishing move against him. Uh, crowd went crazy for it. It was great. Uh, though he narrowly... But I, I knew it wasn't going to end like that, you know. Though he narrowly escaped, the submission attempt fueled Gargano's fire into a Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Get it? After stripping the floor mat outside the ring, so Gargano, you can see the struggle with Gargano. He wants, he wants to be the good guy Gargano. He still comes out, he high fives the kids and all this stuff. Comes out uh, smiling, you know, smiles, and uh, you can see kind of the old, the old goody two shoes. But then when he's going and he's in the ring and he's getting frustrated, he can't get the job done, he can't score that win, he can't score the pinfall. And he gets frustrated. He, will, he went outside of the ring and he pulled back the floor mat to expose the concrete. And he, he was going to suplex uh, Ricochet onto the concrete. And he hesitated. And then he said, he could see the struggle. And he said, uh, no, he said to himself, I, I, I don't want to finish it like that. And he, and he threw him back in the ring. Goes back in the ring. The match continues. He still can't get the win. You could see the frustration building up in him, and so uh, back out on the floor again, there's the, there's the mat already peeled back, and he finally decides, I'm, I'm doing this, I, you know, he wants to win the match, he can't get it done without uh, using sh uh, shortcuts, so he suplexes Ricochet right on the bare concrete, then dragged him back into the ring to finish the job with a wicked slingshot DDT. And then he looked at the camera and he goes, I win. 
I win! Which is the same line that later in the night, Johnny Gargano, I'm mean, sorry, Tommaso Ciampa used the same line later in the night. And uh, so there you go. Johnny Gargano wins the match. Brand new NXT North American champion, Johnny Gargano. And uh, what a fantastic match. What a great story tell, uh, story, uh, storytelling with Johnny Gargano, his struggle between being the good Johnny Gargano and the bad Johnny Gargano. But being the good Johnny Gargano doesn't get the job done. So he's going over to the dark Johnny Gargano, more aggressive, and that got him the win. So pretty fascinating stuff. And then it finishes up. If 2018 was the birth of Mr. Johnny Takeover, 2019 has officially become the era of Johnny Champion. So uh, really great stuff. Uh, man, this was one of those matches where you go, this, this, this didn't go on last. <laughs> I know it wasn't for the NXT Championship. It was the North American Championship. But you just knew that none of the other matches coming up were going to match this. This was the match of the night. It stole the show. You weren't going to see a better match uh, uh, for this show or probably for the Royal Rumble or maybe even for the rest of the year. If early uh, match of the year contender. One of the best matches I've ever seen. Uh, just fantastic. Congratulations, Johnny Gargano. Uh, Ricochet also just off the charts good. Uh, great stuff. Great stuff. These guys are some of the best you'll see in wrestling uh, today or any time, any time in wrestling. So good stuff. Cheers. Fantastic match. Five star classic. Excellent. All right, so we go into the uh, next match now. Already automatically, uh, whatever match is coming up after that, man, I feel bad. For I feel bad for those people because uh, no matter what's next, how, how do you follow that match? Because you want to retain the attention of the audience and we just saw a five-star classic and just your match isn't going to be as good as them, but it just, it's just not. And uh, no matter what the match is, oh my gosh, what shoes to fill. So, uh, but anyway, coming up next, uh, the NXT Women's Championship We've got Bianca Belair versus the NXT champion, Shayna Baszler, uh, my favorite uh, women's uh, wrestler in NXT at the moment. Uh, Shayna Baszler, I'm a big fan of her. She's awesome. Now, right away, uh, I was not, uh, when she first came into NXT, I was not a fan at all of Bianca Belair. But the more I see of her, the more light, the more I'm gro she's growing on me because. Um, don't like her ring entrance. Don't like uh, she, just her body language and things. But once you, once you kind of get into her, and you, I, I've seen some uh, kind of some of her interviews, and uh, she's actually seems like a, a, a lovely person, <laughs> um, very likable. Uh, she's a badass in the ring for sure, but. Um, I don't like that because I'm like, I don't want to like you. I want to hate you. <laughs> so st stop it. Stop winning me over, damn it. <laughs> so, uh, but she's growing on me for sure. She is uh, very good in the ring. And, uh, but this match was fascinating because I was looking forward to this because you got NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler, very dominant, kind of a UFC kind of style, uh, badass, versus Bianca Belair, who so far has been undefeated. Un, da, fi I hate that, by the way. Uh, undefeated. So, uh, looking forward to this match. Just, I felt bad for both of these women because just being placed after that Johnny Gargano match, man, good luck. <laughs> you know? But uh, they did a good job. It was an interesting match. I thought it was kind of, yeah, just... Just bad luck with the uh, being after that great five star match with Johnny Gargano and uh, just it, they kept my attention, but it just was hard. But uh, anyway, it's some interesting stuff did happen here. Let's read what it says: the highly anticipated confrontation between NXT Women's Champion Shayna Baszler 
and white hot challenger Bianca Belair ended in historic fashion when Baszler put an end to the EST of NXT's undefeated streak. They actually hyphenated it, so it says und. I hate that. God, I hate that. I'm glad that's coming to an end. Uh, there was a couple spots where Shayna Baszler got up in Bianca Belair's face and said, You're over Ray Ted. <laughs> Which I enjoyed that spot. That was cool. But uh, Shayna Baszler defeats uh, the undefeated streak and retains her NXT championship. Now, very interesting the way it went down. Uh, despite vowing to put a rest, they put R hyphen EST. Oh, God. Can we put R hyphen EST to these puns? Put a rest to these puns, please, and these nicknames. Uh, who writes this garbage? Uh, I'm just going to read it normally, okay? Despite vowing to put a rest to Bel Air's streak, Baszler almost ate her words when Bel Air stunned her opponent with her dazzling athleticism and impressive agility in the early goings. But when Baszler locked onto a limb, all things spelled out danger. After pulling Bel Air by the ponytail, by the way, she's, you know, she's got this four foot long or whatever ponytail, uh, but uh, Baszler used it to her advantage and pulled it, used it as leverage, this kind of stuff. Uh, pulled her by the ponytail, forced her to hit the ring post head first. That was a great spot. I enjoyed that. The queen of spades clutched onto the left arm of the EST before stomping her elbow into the mat. She does that crazy looking move. Where her, where her elbow's up like this, and she stomps on it and just looks nasty. Uh, she did that. Uh, kind of felt bad for Bianca Belair in, at that moment in the match. From there, Baszler continued her domination with more limb-twisting maneuvers and strikes, but the willpower of Belair would not allow her opponent to snatch an easy win. Let's see if it gets into... I don't know if it gets into that... Uh, she puts her finishing hold uh, submission move on Bianca Belair, and twice she escaped it, which was an, an amazing, amazing. That I don't know that I've ever seen anyone escape her submission hold. When Belair gathered enough strength to get back on the attack, she fought back with an unrelenting resolve. Feeling the pressure, Baszler pushed Belair into the referee. Here's where things get interesting. But she was soon surprised with a waiting KOD by Belair. That's, I don't know what KOD is. That's her finishing move, I guess. As the pressure mounted, Baszler's pals, Marina Shafir and Jessamine Duke, jumped in to lend her an assist. By the way, the referee's been knocked down. She's not seeing any of this. Uh, so the referee gets knocked down. Uh, the KOD, yeah, that was one of her finishing moves. And But the she goes for the pin, but... Uh, the, she sees the referees knocked down, and you felt terrible because she had the match won. She goes for the pin. The crowd's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The referee's out. She gets up, realizes the referee's out, and she's visibly upset and shaken. She, oh my God, I had the match won. I've got, should, I should be the champion. Why is this happening now? And it just felt terrible. And then um, income. Uh, in come Baszler's pals Marina Shafir and Jessamine Duke. But Bel Air thwarted the interference with a spear to Shafir and a sit out face buster to Duke. The distraction was pivotal, however, as Baszler took advantage by clasping onto her undefeated rival with a Kirifuda clutch. And of course, this is when the referee comes back to. Oh. Oh, oh God. Belair miraculously countered the submission hold with her sheer strength. That's what I talked about earlier, where she got out of the clutch, which was just uh, amazing strength. That was really cool. And uh, you really thought, hey, maybe she's going to get out of this and still get the win. Uh, but she twisted Baszler into position for a suplex, but she whiffed, what does that mean, whiffed on a 450 splash before Belair 
and snared the challenger in another Kirifuda clutch. So yeah, that, that was an awesome spot. She goes for this splash, but uh, uh, Basler was waiting for her, and she just fell right back into that submission hold uh, off the top rope. That was really cool. Forcing the EST of NXT to pass out in the hold and dealing Belair her first loss. Man. So Belair looked really strong. Um, they didn't get into the spot she did. She's got this big, long hair ponytail, and uh, she's been known to use it as almost like a whip. Well, anyway, she whips her hair uh, into uh, Shayna Baszler, and it literally cut her skin open on her, on her uh, side. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's just brutal. Uh, I'm not sure how she gets her hair to do that, but yeah, she whipped whipped her hair and it literally cut open skin on Shayna Baszler. That was a, a nasty spot. That was oh my gosh, you could tell it was very painful. <laughs> oh man, but uh, yeah, good match, uh, good finish, and uh, Shayna Baszler using her heel tactics and her friends Jessamine Duke and uh, uh, Shafir. Uh, as the distraction to get the win and uh, but you could tell like Bianca Belair should have got the win but the referee was knocked down that was just uh, it was it was good execution on the match and it made it made Bianca Belair look strong they announced her her win as a submission but it wasn't a submission she passed out from the from the she never submitted she passed out from the submission hold and the referee stopped the match so um that's how that went down. But they announced it as a submission. It wasn't a submission. Now that's interesting. I wonder if she's going to come out and still proclaim that she's undefeated. Because <laughs> she never submitted. There's your storyline for NXT. So I was uh, just... Uh, the, the energy level just wasn't quite there. Only because of the placement of their match after Johnny Gargano. Which was just unfortunate. But otherwise... I did enjoy the, the match, and uh, it was good. Not the best women's match we've seen out there, but it, it, was, it was very interesting uh, with the whole aspect of the undefeated streak, Bianca Belair. All right, well, only one match left. We got NXT champion Tomasa Ciampa versus Aleister Black. Now, I was looking forward to seeing what, what's going to happen. We didn't see it in the previous match, but... This whole storyline with, with Tommaso, Tommaso Ciampa and uh, Johnny Gargano. Are they going to reunite? What's going to happen? We didn't see anything develop quite yet, but let's see what happens in this match. Now, I was looking forward to this match because uh, Aleister Black and Tommaso Ciampa are also known to put on outstanding matches. We already saw Johnny Gargano and Ricochet put on an amazing match. How's this match going to turn out? Let's find out, huh? So in the weeks before TakeOver Phoenix, Tomasa Ciampa delivered a shrewd sentiment about his NXT Championship run. The title doesn't make the man. The man makes the title. After defending his coveted championship in a grueling clash against Aleister Black, the self-proclaimed Greatest sports entertainer alive. By the way, I hate that phrase, sports entertainer. We want to watch wrestling. We don't want to watch sports entertainer. We want to watch wrestling. The name of the company is World Wrestling Entertainment. Before they were forced to change their name, they were the World Wrestling Federation. And only because of the World Wildlife Fund and their stupid lawsuit did they have to change their name to World Wrestling Entertainment. And then Vince McMahon decides, hey, let's make it more entertainment focused and less wrestling focused. And it's gone downhill ever since, in my opinion. The main component of your company is wrestling. Let's focus on that. These are wrestlers, not sports entertainers. Wrestling is entertaining. Anyway, that just drives me nuts, that, that term, sports entertainer. In a fight that will go down as one of NXT's most hotly anticipated championship rematches, Champa and Black fought each other with pure fury. 
For Champa, he wanted nothing more than to preserve his sweet union with Goldie. That's what he calls the championship title. He calls it Goldie, and he hugs it. <laughs> Walks around looking very insecure, and he hugs his title. Uh, I love the way he does that. The nickname given it to his championship belt. For Black, it was correcting the sins committed on the July 25th edition of NXT. So obviously, this, this Aleister Black's uh, feud with Tomasa Champa and even Johnny Gargano, excuse me, Johnny Gargano. Uh, this goes back several months when he got uh, kind of interjected into this feud between Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Champa, and he's now kind of in the middle of it, which is fantastic. Uh, you know, really good stuff. The culmination of these storms made way for a wild collision in which the Dutch Destroyer and the Blackheart brutalized each other with every weapon in their arsenals. Black struck Champa with more strikes than a bowling lane. More strikes than a bowling lane. If you're going to use puns like that, why don't we say uh, uh, on the Raw review, uh, uh, out comes Nia Jax, who has more chins than a Chinese phone book. Oh, that wouldn't be politically correct, huh? Okay. More strikes in a bowling lane. Oh, Lord. Lacing him with an assortment of kicks across the chest and jaw. As hard as Black's hits were, the Black Heart endured, facing his opponent to exhaust all the maneuvers in his tool belt. Champa exposed the left knee of Black, dropping him knee first into the announcer's table, and even locking in a single leg Boston Crab submission hold to further tenderize the limb. This was a uh, great stuff. Uh, weaken up a limb and work it. Uh, it's a great makes a great component of any wrestling match, and uh, selling selling a you know a weakness or weakening up. By the way, that was great because uh, uh, Alistair Black's finishing hold is the fade to black, which is a spinning heel kick. And of course, if his knee is shot, he's not going to be able to uh, get that heel kick. Uh, but like Champa, Black pushed back. When Champa dropped him with the fairy tale ending, which is his finishing move, it's, it's almost like a uh, combination between a suplex, a suplex and a Death Valley driver or a uh, brain buster. Almost like a brain buster. Fairy tale ending. The Dutch destroyer avoided a pinfall. Infuriated, Champa stepped out of the ring to expose the mat on the outside and was met with a knee strike from the Flying Dutchman. But the tide swung once the action spilled back into the ring. After kicking out of an impact DDT, Black followed up by clocking the NXT champion with a black mass. But when Black attempted to close the, close the fight with another, dev, another devastating blow, his wounded knee gave out. He was trying to do his uh, fade to black, and his, his, the knee he stands on as he's spinning around gave out. And left Champa the opening to secure the fairy tale ending again. And retain Goldie. So still your NXT champion, Tommaso Ciampa. Now, um, this match, oh man, this, nothing wrong with the match. The match was great. Both these men were great. But it was such a slow pace. And uh, reminded me of the Undertaker's matches. Some of the Undertaker's matches... Uh, the, fin the finish was good. The finish was okay here. Uh, we'll get into what the real story was in a minute, but um, you know they sold the they sold the knee injury, which contributed to the end of the match, which was fine. Nothing spectacular. the The pace was so slow. I was bored, especially after that fantastic match earlier. It, it kind of right in the middle of the card. You got the Johnny Gargano match, then the ladies match which was not quite as good. And then this one, this pace just went real, just real slow. I was actually kind of bored with it. And I was real tired from trying to get my videos out the night before last night. And I was actually dozing off. And uh, I even saw some of the other people. Delex Man, who's one of the reviewers I watched, he said he was dozing off on this match. So I wasn't the only one that was kind of bored uh, with, this, with the pacing of this match. Uh, nothing wrong with the, the match itself. Uh, it was good. It was good. It was a good match, um, but just 
man, we, I've definitely seen better between both of these opponents. Uh, the, the pacing was just very slow. And um, wasn't the five-star classic uh, that we've seen. Both of these guys have been in five-star classics. At War Games, uh, Alistair Black wrestled Johnny Gargano, and it was a fantastic match. It was one of the best matches I've ever seen uh, back then, and, and that's just before the Survivor Series. So we know Johnny, uh, or sorry, we know Alistair Black can go, and then we've seen Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa in some five-star classics, so we know uh, Tommaso Ciampa can go. But for some reason, this particular match just didn't, just wasn't the best. Uh, Nothing was wrong with it, but, uh, yeah. Uh, now, this is where the article just ends. They don't even mention. Let me, let me review this. Yeah. They don't even mention in this article what happened after this match. So, uh, that's interesting. So, after the match, uh, Tommaso Ciampa's heading back up the ring. He won the match. Uh, he goes up on the match. He's holding up the NXT Championship belt. And who comes out onto the stage is Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Gargano also comes out to the stage. They're kind of eyeballing each other. What's going to happen? We don't know. So Johnny Gargano walks up. He's looking at Tommaso Ciampa holding his, his uh, NXT Championship. He's holding his NXT North American Championship. They're eyeballing each other. So Johnny Wrestling comes up, stands right next to right next to Tommaso Ciampa and holds up his title. And Tommaso Ciampa holds up his title and they're side by side holding up their championships. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that all but cements that they're officially back together as DIY. Now, is it official? Not technically, I guess. But man... They're not fighting, are they? <laughs> Seems like they're side by side. They're kind of getting along. Oh, man. What a storyline. Fantastic. Amazing. And uh, that's how NXT TakeOver went off the air. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano side by side, each holding up their championship belts. Just amazing. Fantastic. Now... News. Uh, after NXT went off the air, they showed uh, during the show that uh, the Velveteen Dream was in attendance. He gets out of a limo, two beautiful women on each arm. <laughs> He's sitting ringside the whole show. He never got involved in, uh, during the actual show. But after the show, he comes up onto the stage, starts stalking smack to both Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa. Down comes Aleister Black. Out comes Adam Cole. And uh, out comes Ricochet. Uh, all six of these guys are out on the stage arguing. I, I wish I could hear what they were saying, but uh, they were all talking smack to each other. And all of a sudden, big brawl erupted. They all start fighting. The referees come out. They're trying to split it up. Spills into the backstage area. Big brawl going on. None of this was on the actual pay-per-view, but you can see it on WWE.com. Oh my gosh, this big brawl broke out. Uh, what does that mean for the future? Is there going to be a six-man tag? Is that the main event of the next uh, TakeOver? Before WrestleMania? I don't know. Uh, interesting stuff, though. So on one side, you've got Johnny Gargano. you got, um, excuse me, Tommaso Ciampa. And uh, on the other side, you have, I'm sorry, let me, there's a lot of people to remember. We've got Ricochet, Velveteen Dream, and uh, Aleister Black. And uh, I'm missing somebody. But you know, anyway, good stuff, uh, good brawl, and uh, it makes you wonder what's happening with DIY, what's happening uh, with these, uh, is there going to be a tag team match, what's going to happen, six-man tag, who knows, it's uh, really interesting, and there's the, the thing I like about the storylines here is that there's so many different storylines, and they're all intertwining together, with Aleister Black is involved with uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Aleister Black's involved with uh, Johnny Gargano, and now Ricochet as well. He lost the title to uh, uh, Johnny Gargano, and uh, of course they've got Tommaso Ciampa being called the Puppet Master, and he's kind of trying to influence Johnny Gargano, how he should go after the North American uh, Championship, and just, just so many different storylines all interlaced 
it's just genius. And uh, uh, this is what the main roster needs because there's so many different segments you can do with it, so many different storylines you can do with it. You could, you could fill up uh, uh, so much television time with this kind of stuff. So just amazing. It makes you look forward. I want to see NXT and see what's going to happen and what's the next takeover going to bring. Fantastic stuff. All right, let's go over my uh, overall review of the show. Overall, it was a great show. Uh, really enjoyed it. But as far as takeovers go, uh, there was some stuff that kind of missed the target, in my opinion. Uh, it opened up real strong with the tag team match. I could not have been more happy with the start of this show. Um, with the War Raiders. Oh, man, that was just so unbelievable, the War Raiders. They win the NXT Tag Team Championship. Makes me interested in what's going to become of the Undisputed Era. Matt Riddle and Cassius Ono, by the way. Uh, not the best match either. I, I personally was checked out of it because of the whole thing with the, the bare feet and him biting the toe. I thought that was disgusting. I didn't care for that match at all. Even if I didn't have a thing about feet, it, it just wasn't the best match. It was okay. Um, Cassius Ono doesn't connect with me. I think he's uh, he's all right, but I don't know. Uh, Johnny Gargano and Ricochet stole the show, if not the whole weekend, if not the whole year. Fantastic match. That was the highlight of the night. So uh, uh, then we go on to the women's championship match. Again, that was a good match. It wasn't spectacular, but uh, they had the unfortunate task of uh, following that great Johnny Gargano match. And, but great storytelling there and with Bianca Belair. Uh, I, I was pretty happy with the way they told the story of her, the way she lost the streak uh, with, uh, with uh, Baszler, kind of her underhanded tactics. Tommaso Ciampa, Aleister Black, uh, I was disappointed. I, I, I just was. Nothing was wrong with the match, but the pacing was so slow. It just did not grab my attention. It was just... Uh, man, they needed a faster pace or shorter. They needed less time. I think they had too much time for that match. But uh, the story really of that match was when Johnny Gargano came out afterwards. And uh, we, we all want to see what's going to happen with DIY. So that was the story of that match. The actual match, I thought, I was disappointed with it. Not that there was anything wrong with the match. It was still a good match. Um, just the pacing. It was a pacing issue. Uh, ever since Johnny Gargano's match, the pacing just went downhill until this very slowly paced match. It just fizzled out. So um, overall, two out of the five matches were spectacular. Uh, the, the main event was just the pacing was slow. It was, it was a fine match. And I just was not at all interested in Footboy, Matt Riddle. And um, yeah, so uh, I, it was still a good show. I'm going to give it a solid B, solid B. Um, definitely, we takeovers are usually A+. Plus, and the fact that it wasn't an A this time, it was a B, uh, is surprising for takeover. Um, just some stuff could have been better. And um, Johnny Gargano, honestly, should have gone on last, even though he's not. it wasn't the title match. They stole the whole show. Johnny Gargano and... And Ricochet. Uh, just amazing. So the amazing stuff. I'm not complaining at all about the show as a, as a, gen as a general. But for takeovers, uh, some stuff just missed the mark. Wasn't quite there. Uh, I was still happy with the show overall. Especially the Jar Johnny Gargano and Ricochet match. So that's my review. NXT TakeOver Phoenix. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, uh, I really enjoyed it. Thumbs up. Um, but just compare it to other takeovers was just not quite there, uh, but uh, still a good show. So let me know what you think of it. Once again, don't forget to subscribe up above. And uh, just a reminder that tonight, uh, today in Los Angeles, join me at Dave & Buster's. We're going to watch the Royal Rumble and uh, a lot of wrestling fans coming out. And we're going to have a good time at... Dave & Buster's, again, if you don't know where that is, it's on Hollywood Boulevard, right by the Chinese Theater. There's that big Hollywood and Highland Mall. Uh, right across the street, I think, I think is where they do the Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel show. Uh, but uh, hard to miss, uh, the Hollywood and Highland Mall. It's a big major touristy area. 
a big mall right there, and they've got those giant concrete elephants. But right in that mall, there's a Dave & Buster's. That's where I'll be. Uh, starts at 4 o'clock Pacific time, and uh, I'll be there starting at 2 o'clock until the Royal Rumble ends. So going to do some drinking, some eating, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So come on out and join me at Dave & Buster's today, 4 o'clock. We'll see you there. So that's going to wrap up my video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. Tomorrow night, you're going to see some highlights from Dave & Buster's as well as my uh, review afterwards. I'm gonna throw in my footage from Dave & Buster's and then I'm gonna come home and record just like this. I'm gonna record my Royal Rumble review. So make sure you subscribe, you don't wanna miss that video. And until then, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for being my passenger. Uh, thanks for riding shotgun and uh, hitting the road with me. And we're gonna, tomorrow we're hitting the road to Los Angeles to Dave & Buster's. Come on out and have a good time. And until tomorrow night, we will. See you on the road. Thanks for watching, everybody.